alright because I like to start my videos with alright or my bits of videos with alright um, Now I've got the measurements of the crank. I'm going to take measurements of the um, the clearances. So to do that, I've got to assemble the um, the begins with the bearings in it. Now, when I pulled this apart, it was dark. It was a little bit late. I was a little bit tired, and I had a quick look, and I didn't see a bearing disintegrated or completely fallen apart. However, this is bearing for number one and that is pretty badly damaged but the face is torn off and also you see here and here there's no wear at all on the sides and there's reasonable wear including heavy wear there where that's been damaged in the middle now you expect to see more wear on the ends because that's where all the load is there's really no lateral load or minimal this one here has also got some damage in it here and uneven wear. See, it's sort of there's no wear on this side, but it wears evenly on the side. So this could potentially be the issue. But to be sure, we're going to measure it. So to measure it, we need to get everything nice and clean and dry. And I've just cleaned it all with a nice microfiber cloth. We don't want any drags or anything in there. Once again. The tool I'm going to be using the same vernies, which are fine for doing this checking. They're not fine for doing engine assembly because they're not fine enough. And that go down to the tolerances required. Uh, but they will do the job here. Now these, I don't know if they're stamped from factory or someone who's pulled it apart has done this. We've got numbers stamped on them. This is the number two piston. Number two. I thought that was number one. number one there. There you go. Anyway, we'll start with number two then. Yeah, so to do this, we need to bolt it down. Torque it to spec. So that's what I'm about to do. And before I do that, I need a couple of bits of timber to protect the rod. My vice. Get it run down. Okay, let's start it. So the torque numbers on this are um, I think 15 newton meters plus 90 degrees or 60 degrees. So we want to set our torque wrench to the right torque, which I did take a photo of the screen. That's what I was talking about when I said this wasn't enough, it didn't have the torque specs on it. So tighten to 14 to 16 newton meters. Okay, then place alignment marks to the nuts, the conrod cap, blah blah blah, tighten 60 to 65 degrees. So 14, did it say newton? 14 to 15, 14 to 16. It's just past 17.6, it's going to be 14, isn't it? So, which is not a lot of torque, obviously. Excellent. And then 90 degrees, uh, 60 to 65 degrees. And for that, we need a different tool. We need a breaker bar. And I went and bought this today, just to do this job. So I keep having issues with holding this thing where it's going to be held. This is a cheap one. I might be better off just eyeballing it for this purpose, not for assembly, but for this purpose. So I've got the, the locking mechanism there. So we're aiming for 60 to 65 degrees. I'm going to come in so you can see the dial up high. 
over that. Can you see that? So 60 to 65. Okay. Now let's reset that to zero. Let's see if we can find something to stick it on on this side. Probably five degrees already. There we go. 65 on both. So that is that torque to spec. Now see right. Roughly 47. Let's check that. It's about right. Yep. 47. So a target is all about the bearing, bearing clearance. So now we can't measure right across the center here because you got the tangs and the joins there. So we measure just off center. 47.95. Horizontal. Now, I'm going to guess that this is bigger than the vertical. Mm, not substantially, but it may be enough. 48.01. So, we take this number, the crank journal. Go with the vertical on number two. 47.94 the vertical number 47.94 subtract that from 48.01 discombobulate it I can do that in my head but I can't be bothered equals 0 0.7 uh, 0 0.07 millimeters uh, doesn't seem right, does it? Does not seem right at all. 47.9 48.01 Oh, 47.6 Where's the wood drift? Ah. 47.95 47.94 So we're getting the same measurement So 0 0.07 Millimeters Oh, here's the clearance. Yeah, I, was, I was having a fit there. I was looking at the wrong numbers. Um, so I'll be 25 oil clearance should be 0 0.02, uh, and that is 0 0.07. So that oil clearance is, is that three times what it should be. Uh, that is standard one, which is the looser of the two options. So let's say it was even standard, it's 0.04, and still nearly double that. If they're both, if everything's at the maximum tolerance, it's 0 0.04, 0 0.021 to 0 0.04, and this is 0 0.07. So that says to me, the crank's undersized, and these are standard size piston uh, ring uh, bearings fucking bearings or something similar or you know they might be slightly big but they're not big enough to make up the difference of how far down that's been ground so yeah oil clearance is three between two and three times too large on number two 
and I got a stink suspicion that's going to be common across it. Now I can measure either side of this, I can see that there's uneven wear already so what I'm going to do is just look at um, look at sort of an average central because I think these clearances are way too big and maybe that is enough for that knock. It had only just started and it was just starting to get worse. So I'm going to do them all up, I'm going to measure them all and then I'll come back with the results. Okay so now I've done four. I've got a system down for this. We just pop that in there. There we go. We don't do it up on our thumb. It doesn't have to be very tight because we're only stopping rotation. Torque grant still set to I think it was 15 newton meters. And this thing, I got the 60 facing me, and we're just gonna hold it. Like that, we go to 65 or thereabouts. Reset. Check the zero. Thereabouts. And then we measure. Going right across and nice and flat. 8405. What a surprise. It's exactly the same number as we get every time. Except for one. And then this one. Uh, 4805, sorry. Uh, 4806. Oh, now, on number three, you should also measure the thrust face, because this is the one with the thrust bearing on it. So, it says 21.8. So I'll just draw that on here. 28.79 slash 8 average thrust face. And I'll check that against what it's supposed to be. I don't know what that should be. And now we'll just set you up on the last one. And I'll just play it quickly through just like doing this whole piston start to finish um, so you can see the whole process sort of in one smooth motion I'll set you up up here 